What's up, Internet? My name is Matt Gisantana. Welcome to the office where we discuss tech and the world around it. Today, I have a very quick video on a question that I see across YouTube, across social media, and myself has asked YouTubers all the time, what is the best lens to get? And the best answer for that is, what are you using the lens for? It could be for portrait photography, landscape, YouTube videos, it depends. And so when you ask a question of what lens should I get for X or what lens should I get for Y, you really wanna ask yourself, what do you need it for at the moment? What are you trying to grow into? And what is next for you? And I found that over the years, the best way to do that is to try a lens out. Now, if you're like me and you're in a small town and you don't have a local camera shop and pretty much all you have is like a Best Buy, you may not have the opportunity to try out a lens to see what it can do for you. I am currently filming on a EOS R and the 35 millimeter 1.8. Excuse me, when I first got this camera, I had the 24 to 105 F4. That was a pretty good lens for video. However, I found myself not being able to film very well in outdoors with bright light. Now, most people will say, you know, if you're gonna do video, uh, ND filter is a must, and I agree with that. That is absolutely a must. But what I also found is that this camera really isn't my primary YouTube camera. I am much more likely to use my phone for YouTube content. I'm more likely to use this camera for my professional photography business. And so I found that the 24 to 105 was not a good fit for two reasons. One, it was not sharp enough. And two, the aperture was at F4 and it was not better faster. I needed something around an F2.8 or even better like this 35 millimeter, which is an F1.8. Now, I did get an opportunity to try out a 85 1.2 by renting it. And that really opened my eyes to what I can do with a renting program or what I can do when I can try out a lens before I buy it. The 85 millimeter RF lens for Canon is extremely expensive. And it's not something that you just pick up at a store, you know, Adorama or B&H or wherever you like to shop. And then you get it and you try it out and you return it. That's not really my style. If I'm going to invest in a lens, I want to really use it on a photo shoot. So what I like to do is if I ever have a photo shoot coming up and I know that I might need certain shots, what I like to do is I'll rent the lens, try it out, really put it to the test, see how fast it is, see how quickly I can use it or compose a shot when in a pinch. And that's usually the best rule for me to kind of figure out what lens I need. This weekend, I did get an opportunity to rent uh, a lens from Borrowed Lenses. And this is not a sponsored post because there are plenty of rental websites out there. But I really want to kind of put that out there to you guys that if you guys want to try out a lens, definitely rent it. Uh, I was able to rent this for about $100 for four days. So $25 a day. Now, while that may seem expensive, this lens is typically about $2,400. So before I make the actual purchase, which you can probably find it on sale or get some deals or maybe even purchase used to even save some money, this really gave me an opportunity to try it out. So let me go ahead and give you guys a little uh, overview of the 70 to 200. Now this video isn't specifically about this lens. It's mostly about just trying out lenses in general before you purchase and also really figuring out what lens is best for you. This 35 millimeter, for example, just to go back to it, is perfect for YouTube videos. It's great for what I'm doing. I do a lot of portrait photography, wedding photography, um, nature photography, street photography. So the 35 millimeter is like, I love it. Like for $500, this lens is hands down my favorite lens in the RF lineup of price <laughs> obviously if money wasn't a, an object i would be able to buy like the the 15 to 35 24 to 70 and the 70 to 200 which i have right here so this 70 to 200 right here if you look at the size of it let me show you in comparison how tall it is to an iphone 11 and this is why i like this lens so this is an iphone 11 so if you take it off the, the uh, lens cap, let me start from the lens cap down. Look at the size comparison of this lens. 
Like, I'm amazed. Like, I've always seen people with 70 to 200 or some of these really big lenses and like they're long and they're cumbersome. And if you put them in your gear bag, like it takes up the whole bag. But this right here, now while it's heavy, it doesn't take up much space at all. Like it's very, very functional. And I really, really, really enjoy this lens. At its price of like $2,400, I honestly may consider purchasing it to like stay in my kit. This plus the 35 might be a lens that I keep in my my kit for you know weddings portrait photography and everything else now i will throw up some shots and some things that i took with this lens um, i did get an opportunity to do three photo shoots i did a family photo shoot i did some headshots um, and i also did a small uh, backyard wedding which was very very fun and it was beautiful beautiful scenery so i got to try out this lens in a really tight situation as well as this 35 millimeter. I found out that this has its benefits as being a lens that I could use for most shots. And this 35 millimeter can fill in the gaps. So that's why I say rent a lens if you have the opportunity to, if not try it out. Whatever you do, try out the lens before you actually make the purchase. Um, and also this really gives you an idea of if you're running a business through your photography, this gives you an idea of what lenses are good for renting and what lenses are good to actually purchase and keep on a daily basis so that you can do more shoots. Because this lens right here, while it is expensive, could probably satisfy most of my shoots very, very well. This right here is a macro lens. So in some situations when I need to get really, really tight shots or close shots, this can do what this can. And also, of course, this is a 35. It's perfect for, you know, street photography and landscapes and whatever else you wanna get done. So like I mentioned, rent your gear. I know I'm rambling, this is off script, but I wanted to show you guys what you can do when you try out the lenses. And also really just to put that out there that I'm still learning, I'm still trying to figure out this photography thing. And a lot of times there is no one answer for everything. At the end of the day, get out there, create, make moves, and figure out what you need later. Thanks for watching. Stay up.